Chapter 1. Drought is Real. Chapter 2. Children at Risk. Chapter 3. Real Learning is Important. Chapter 4. Money, Friend, or Foe. Chapter 5. Church, Where Are You? Chapter 6. Race is as American as apple pie. Chapter 7. Where has love gone? Chapter 8. Solution. Drought stricken. Spiritual drought is not just a mirage. When your life is in a state of drought and you're thirsting for something, here lies the answer. In moments when men experience extreme thirst, you will see the true nature of those men because thirst impacts lives in so many negative ways. You'll either cry out or die. Do not let the loved ones nearest and dearest to you pass away due to thirst when you can help them quench that thirst by sharing the love of Christ. Chapter 1 Drought is Real First, let's get an understanding of the nature of a drought. Droughts can be more damaging than tornadoes, tropical cyclones, winter storms, and flooding combined. Unlike a hurricane, tornado, or flooding, the horrific effects of a drought can happen gradually over a long period of time or quickly over a short period of time. We now live in a day and age when the heinous acts of men are becoming equal to the devastation of such natural disasters. As you will see, drought tends to drain life as well as the color from everything it touches. The duration of droughts varies widely. Drought can develop quickly and last only a matter of weeks, aggravated by extreme heat and or wind. More commonly, drought can persist for months or years. There have been at least three major U.S. droughts in the last 100 years. The longest droughts in the U.S. occurred in the 1930s, the 1950s, and the early 21st century. The Dust Bowl era of the 1930s remains the benchmark drought and extreme heat event in U.S. historical record. During that event, the temperature would soar as high as 120 degrees. Now that's hot. Think about it. Temperatures that high will ultimately have a deadly physical effect on the elderly and children. There are certain parts of the country that experience drought annually without fail. California, Utah, Arizona, Oregon, Colorado, and other states. It's amazing how much devastation can be caused by the simple lack of consumable water. We as humans should understand the importance of water. The human body is made up of 60 to 65 percent water. So, if there is not enough physical water available, people will wither away and go back to the dust which mankind was originally formed. The worst record drought in the U.S. took place in the Lone Star State of Texas from 1950 to 1957. By the end of the drought, 244 of Texas's 254 counties at the time had been declared federal disaster areas. In recent years, we have seen large and small cities struggle with having simple, clean, everyday drinking water. What could possibly be the reasoning for this shortage? Water use has increased by about 1% a year over the last 40 years, driven by population growth and changing consumption patterns, according to the UN World Water Development Report published in 2023. 
By 2050, the number of people in cities facing water scarcity is projected to nearly double from 930 million people in 2016 to up to 2.4 billion, the report found. Urban water demand is expected to increase by 80% by 2050. Without action to address the problem of water scarcity, there will definitely be a global crisis. How is this happening at a time where humans have made such gigantic technological leaps and bounds? Our world is full of marvels, such as self-driving automobiles, smartphones, Wi-Fi, and so much more. But at the end of the day, the real needs of human beings are very basic in nature. Food, shelter, and water. All of these wondrous advancements are beginning to rear some really negative side effects. It puts me in mind of some of the commercials we see for wonder drugs that are supposed to help but not cure. Things like high blood pressure, HIV, AIDS, depression, and other health problems. When you hear about the side effects, you wonder if it's better to struggle with the health issue and pass on the treatment being offered or take the drug and roll the dice. As human beings, we thirst for so much more. Psalms 41, 1 through 2. As the deer longs for the flowing streams, so I long for you, God. I thirst for God, the living God. Imagine something like the lack of water, which can destroy lives and cause the breakdown of civility between human beings. In this country, we've already seen some examples in places such as Flint, Michigan and Jackson, Mississippi. In each case, only a particular sector of the population was affected, while other people continued to put things in place to secure their own survival. This is a reminder that the drive for self-preservation in us is oh so strong. Even the cost of watching your neighbor perish. Spiritual drought is now the most devastating pandemic plaguing humanity since the beginning of time. But it is often overlooked and unaddressed. Look around today. School shootings are becoming commonplace, still shocking and heartbreaking, but happening too often. Young people are dying long before they really have a chance to taste life. Families are left to weep and mourn loved ones gone way too soon. As somewhat intelligent human beings, we must realize that there are different areas in our lives, from the physical to the spiritual, where we can experience a drought. When that happens, how do we move on from that drought-stricken area of our lives? Do you fall back on the old methods previously used? Do you try to rationalize or plot a strategy because you are so smart? Or do you rely on the inner compass that every believing man, woman, and child is given upon the acceptance of Christ, the Holy Spirit, which can lead you and me to greener pastures with free-flowing waters? The Word promises that there is a well that everyone can drink from and never thirst again. If we are to overcome the drought-stricken state we are in, then each of us will need to drink from that same well. As we go along on this journey together, and I do mean together, because to move from a drought-stricken state, you will likely need some assistance. The first thing we should probably do is examine some of the different areas of our lives that can and are being impacted by drought. Now. This will take courage and strength because so often we struggle with honestly looking at our own lives. We often find it much easier to point out the faults of others and be totally blind to our own faults. Luke 6 and 41. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, but you don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? The hardest person to lie to should be the person in the mirror. 
but I believe that people are finding it easier to deceive themselves these days. Condoning, covering up, and justifying bouts of hatred and violence against each other. Acknowledging our shortcomings is a huge step to possibly finding a solution. But today, too many people are good with just patching up or putting in a temporary stopgap so that things can continue to limp along. Now keep in mind that what you read here will only help if you're tired of being thirsty, tired of trying to grow something in a drought-stricken state, or if you are just sick and tired of being sick and tired. So far, if anything I've said has touched a nerve, that's good. It should, because no one has it all together in your neighborhood, in your state, in this country, or this world. I know that there are those who appear to be doing well in their lives. They seem to be flourishing beyond your imagination. But remember that we are only privy to small pieces of their lives. The drought-stricken areas are usually well-concealed and kept secretly. Perhaps some of you would trade in a heartbeat your drought-impacted areas for someone else's lush and green, well-watered slice of life. For a minute, things may seem great until you find out where the drought-stricken areas are in the life you traded for. And then what? The grass is not always greener on the other side. Stick around long enough and you will find the brown patches. I believe we're better off when we keep our own lives that God has given us and let Jesus be the source that greens our pastures and causes our lives to flourish. Mankind is constantly besieged with all sorts of natural disasters, but drought is the one natural disaster that creates the greatest hunger and thirst. We clearly recognize the physical effects caused by such a disastrous event, but ignore the effects of a spiritual drought. A spiritual drought with an unmeasurable magnitude is washing over men and women, destroying their souls at an unprecedented rate. Millions of people are the very embodiment of the term walking dead and don't even know it. Corruption, greed, and hatred floods the hearts of men and women across this country openly. Without shame and little retribution, we live in a world quickly withering away right before our very eyes. Moving on, let's take a look at some specific drought-stricken areas. Keep in mind that our lives are so intricately woven that one area can have a devastating effect on other areas to the point of crippling and hindering not only ourselves but others in our orbit. If you don't believe me, then take a look at some other people's lives and you can witness the extended drought. The answer begins with each of us realizing that we are incapable of resolving this problem by ourselves. Remember that if a drought has begun or is currently happening, It can be brought to an end with the simple act of providing enough water for every man, woman, and child to drink. Imagine living in a place where you never get any relief from your painful existence and there is no end in sight regardless of how far you are able to look down the road. All you see is trouble and heartache. The misery is so persistent that the anguish begins to set up in your bones. You have a pain that plagues you night and day, and you see death as your only way of escape. Anytime we begin to look at death as our reasonable solution, our vision has become obscured and the truth is being hidden from us. Let's continue to examine the horrendous effects of spiritual drought. It was a number of years ago that God spoke the word drought and then later added the word stricken. Once the two words came together, it was the word stricken that hit hard. Stricken is defined as beset or afflicted, as with disease, trouble, or sorrow. 
when I began to consider the words drought stricken, it hit in a whole new and different way. I understood what a drought is and what it's capable of doing, but to be stricken said to me that endurance is also required because this will not be an overnight fleeting or short-lived event we are experiencing, but a transforming moment in time for us as human beings. How could a person become drought-stricken? I began to imagine someone wandering through a painfully hot and searing desert without water and no hope of finding any water. We all know, based on common sense, which is not all that common anymore, but in such a situation, the future of the person is sure and unavoidable. Death would soon take them. Look around America via the news, social media, and podcasts. The writing is on the wall. As we are probably the thirstiest people on the planet, we are stricken in so many areas of our personal lives, it's crazy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that everyone in America is stricken, but too many people are. The America that so many older people are familiar with passed away some time ago. There just hasn't been a funeral yet. The death certificate should record the cause of death as terminal dehydration. Simply put, America died from thirst. If you are more than 30 years of age, you've witnessed a great culture or class change in this country. If you have not witnessed it, you have been somewhere pulling a Rip Van Winkle through the beginning of a new horrific time in this country. And for those of you who don't know who Rip Van Winkle is, Google it. Those under the age of 30 may have scrolled on their devices and come across bits and pieces of what's developing in this country, but may not have the acumen to put it all together and understand it fully. Remember the time when you were a kid and played outdoors on a hot summer day? I know because I grew up in the Texas heat. We would get so thirsty that we would run into the yard to grab a cool, life-restoring drink from the garden hose connected to the outside faucet. We thought that nothing could be better than that life-giving, refreshing water flowing through that hose. After a drink from that cool, green water hose... We were revitalized to go on. Moments like that teach us that people's needs are really simple in nature. But it is greed and hunger for the illusion of power that has complicated our lives. Men continue to try to destroy or bend the will of other men to their own wills. The neighborly spirit that would bring people together to work for the common good is choked off by a spirit of evil and selfishness. What is it that in every generation there is a small portion of the population that longs to control the lives of the masses? So many people want to rule over others, but they lack the major component to do so. Compassion. A segment of society has become hell-bent on pushing their own agenda an insane perspective on others, no matter how crazy and twisted it may be. Attempts at open and honest dialogue with such people often become shouting and shaming matches because they do not truly desire to seek common ground. The ignorance and depravity of human beings is growing at an astounding rate in this day and age. And it is on full display if you just look around you. I think sometimes the cruelty of man is only limited by his openness to the evil influence that exists. 